currently here in Moscow, Russia, and I've been here for about a month. And of course, I live in neighboring Belarus. And when you're here, you can't help but talk politics. Now, I'm someone who's not super interested in politics, but I noticed that local people, both here and in Belarus, really want to engage on this topic, and it kind of fascinates me. This morning, I saw a headline saying that Vladimir Putin has a 77% approval rating. Now, to put this in context, that's bloody high. Joe Biden, for example, has a 40% approval rating, and I think if you went around the world, you'd be struggling to find approval rating is much above about 55 or 60% for any sitting uh, president or prime minister. The question on your lips and on mine is, is this true? Is his approval rating really so high? If you're a foreigner, foreign to Russia, and you're saying, I don't know, Thailand or Bali or Turkey, and you meet a young Russian person who's left Russia in the last year or two, there's a high probability that they're against the government. They're anti what's happening at the moment, they're anti-government etc etc not all of them will be but a good proportion of them if you're a westerner and you combine this kind of anecdotes with what you see in western media you'll probably think that the 77 percent approval rating is a load of bullshit let me delve into this idea a little bit because if you're meeting uh, russian people in whatever bali etc you're probably meeting maybe one percent of russians two percent of russians there's 140 million people inside of russia so if even 2% left, that's 2.8 million people, probably not that many people have left, right? So you're dealing with a very small minority that has been so motivated by the situation that they wanted to leave, right? So you're not really getting uh, a representative sample. Now, of course, I'm in Moscow. You would expect Moscow to be a little bit more pro-American, pro-global, etc. And also I'm speaking to people who are generally under 40. Again, you'd expect them to kind of lean uh, a little bit against the government on average as well. But what I'm finding is the majority of people here do indeed support the government and you do find the occasional person who doesn't. But I would say that the 77% approval rating is about right. Now living in Belarus, I'm used to seeing the Belarusian flag everywhere. Like really, if you go to a Western country, you don't even know what country you're in, right? They, they don't, there's no kind of sense of nationalism or culture or whatever. You go to Belarus and there's so many Belarusian flags just flying everywhere. So I kind of assumed that coming to Russia, I might find the same thing. Now, especially in this situation, and by the way, the Belarusian flags, they fly anyway, right? The current situation in Ukraine, like the Belarusian, the average Belarusian doesn't really see themselves as a part of that. It's not really part of the narrative so much. Here in Russia, of course it is. So coming here, I was expecting to see a lot of you know, propaganda, if you will, labeled just everywhere. This is what I was expecting. And I've barely seen a Russian flag anywhere. Uh, I've barely seen advertisements. It's really interesting, I'm surprised. The only advertisements I've seen is a billboard uh, near my house and it says, uh, Nasha Strana, uh, Nasha Pobida, which is uh, our country, our victory. But outside of this example, I've really seen very little in government created Influence at least in the public arena. Maybe television's entirely different or radio's entirely different. I'm not sure but I would imagine If you're gonna have a lot of this material on TV and on radio You're probably also gonna have it in the streets and on billboards and so forth. However, what you do see here a lot are guys Wearing different clothes that have the word Russia or the Russian flag on it. You see this every day you might have a hat with a Russian flag a t-shirt a zip-up jumper uh, a backpack with a Russian flag on the back of the backpack there. This is super common. And also what you see, which is really interesting, is a lot of older guys, maybe 40 plus, they're walking around with the kind of army kit on, like it's, like it's a fashion thing. Because of course the army kit and the camouflage kit has come in and out of fashion over the years, just as a, a you know, fast fashion uh, street wear. But here you can see a lot of the older guys are wearing this just around the streets and you get this sense. Now I'm just guessing on this part you get the sense that it's probably in solidarity with the younger Russians who are actually uh, live in the situation. So there's very little obvious propaganda around, yet the government here has this high level of support. Now I want to contrast this, right? I was recently in Lithuania, Vilnius, Lithuania, and there's Ukrainian flags everywhere. Everywhere. They're on buses, they're on restaurants, they're on random buildings, blah, 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 blah. I'm assuming primarily driven by government. Um, you catch a bus and like at the front of the bus at the top there the sign kind of rotates saying where the destination is and 
maybe some of the intermediate suburbs of bus will go to, and then it flips I Heart Ukraine. So you get lots of this kind of stuff. They're really pushing in there. I don't pretend to be a political expert by any stretch of the imagination, but I find this very interesting that the Lithuanian government are more invested in giving an opinion on this situation to their own people than the Russian government is. This tells you that the Lithuanian government believes that they need to pump a hold of this stuff out to get a critical mass of acceptance for their idea, whereas the Russian government doesn't think it needs to do this. I don't want to be a flying expert. I'm not sure what's been happening here the last year and a half. Maybe they've been pumping out heaps of promotional material, etc. And now they've just removed it all just before I came. I mean, it's possible, very unlikely, but it's conceivable. I haven't been here the whole time. Again, I don't consume any television or any other content here either. So I don't know exactly what's going on, but just this surface level thing, it's very clear and very distinct contrast between uh, Lithuania and Russia. Now I'm picking on Lithuania, not because I don't like them, but because I was there. And there's no doubt that the other Baltic countries, maybe Poland, maybe some other Central European countries, have followed suit and are really pushing that kind of pro-Ukrainian line because these countries are all pretty close still, right? If you look at uh, Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, uh, of course, they're in the EU along with Poland, but uh, on the other side, of course, uh, Ukraine, Russia, and Belarus. But before this all started, these countries were pretty bloody integrated. Like, even here in Moscow, I've met several Ukrainians who have just been living here a long time. And I know that uh, people I knew in Belarus helped to smuggle over a Ukrainian guy uh, into Belarus when this thing started as well. And people just know each other. This part of the world, these countries are very socially connected. They're very economically connected, right? So you would assume without encouragement in the correct direction that a lot of people might not take the stance that uh, their governments want them to take. I do understand for very good reason, this is a sensitive topic, so I'm trying to be as objective as possible. I will add one more thing. The people I've spoken to about this, now do remember that I'm only speaking about this in English, right? If I'm speaking with someone who only speaks Russian or my Russian is better than their English, I will not tackle this topic, right? I want to be very precise in what I'm saying, what I'm communicating. So the people that I'm speaking to about this in depth speak English pretty well. But what's happened with these people is that they're very open to my thoughts and ideas. They're very keen to hear them. So they'll, you know, very Russian, they'll tell me their opinion. This is what I think, blah, blah, blah. And then they're very interested. So they don't just rant like idiots. They're very interested and ask me, what do you think and why? What about this? What about that? They want to actually discuss it and when Westerners discuss things and this is something that's just kind of happening lately because you've got these two big political echo chambers in the West you tend to have people just ranting a bit more and less inclined to engage this is what you can get in extreme circumstances so I'm kind of sensitive to this happening but it's not people are pretty open actually no, there's one exception one lady was actually quite crazy uh, aside from her everyone else is, is curious and wants to debate this and they kind of want the truth you know, it's, this is what it seems like. Again, only anecdotes, only people who speak English and just the handful of people I've spoken to uh, about this topic. As I say, they're very keen to talk about it, but they're also very keen to discuss it and share ideas and listen to ideas, which is quite refreshing. So again, trying to be apolitical as possible, just trying to give an honest appraisal of my experiences here, my conversations here. Again, it's just anecdotes, anecdotal chit chat, but I've probably had enough of this chit chat to get a bit of a sense of, of what's going on here. And of course, all of my uh, observations of billboards and so forth, I mean, this is just how it is. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you will know that I generally stay away from politics, right? I don't want to become some political groupie for one political side, chanting, yay, yay, team. I just want to be objective about things, and I find it very difficult to be objective. Um, and viewers don't want to be objective for the most part, is what I've seen. So for these reasons, I tend to stay away from it. Also, I'm in Russia using an American platform. It, it doesn't leave me a lot of wiggle room in terms of what I can discuss anyway. But I just wanted to share this because I thought it was an interesting uh, anecdote, some interesting experiences. I hope you enjoyed them. If you've got some comments you'd like to share below, I'd love to engage, have a chit chat. Uh, do feel free to drop that below. If you enjoyed the video, do click like as well. I almost forgot, I just wanted to share a little bit about how I've been received here because Quite frankly, there's not a lot of Westerns here, right? It's, uh, it's a busy place. It's still kind of a vibrant city, Moscow, and I've been to several other cities as well. But there's not a lot of Westerners here. And I was kind of aware coming here that I may face 
uh, a situation or two that might be a bit uncomfortable. Uh, I'm not really much of a sook to be fair, but yeah, if you've got three guys that want to bash you up or something, you're in a bit of strife, right? So I was aware that this could happen, right? Now, as a whole, people have been super polite, super helpful, super engaged. They don't really see, that. they separate between the government and the person. So they don't think, oh, well, Australian government supporting Ukraine, therefore Australian bad, right? They don't really think this way for the most part. Now, there's been a couple of exceptions. Uh, one was one I've already mentioned in previous videos where a guy refused to sell me something when he found out I was Australian. Look, not a big deal. I'll go to another shop. It's really not a big deal, especially given the circumstances, right? It's, it's, it's extremely minimal. And I kind of understand, you know? Um, a couple of times when I've walked past groups of guy, I've heard a phrase uh, similar to this, uh, Amerikansky Pizdiz, which uh, Amerikansky, you can probably tell, Amerikansky is American. Pizdiz is a, a fairly derogatory term, a severely derogatory term, and it says that uh, I'm a man that has sex with other men, but put in a very uh, rude way that's designed to insult. Now again, look, that's not that much. If that's all that's going to happen, I'm okay with that. It's only been a handful of people, and I, again, I don't really blame them, given the severity of what's going on at the moment. So, as a whole though, uh, they've been very helpful, very welcoming, very friendly, very hospitable. So I've been very uh, appreciative of this.